What's good YouTube, I'm Zero Zeus and welcome back to another Fate video. This is going to be my Fate Grand Order Babylonia episode 17 review. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Thank you for watching and let's jump right into the video. Um, man, let me just say this episode was definitely epic. One thing I want to talk about, Tiamat, we're going to talk about her as soon as we get a little bit further in the episode. So we're going to start talking about how, all right. Basically, the episode picks up where it left off last time. You see Ritsuka, Mash, um, Ishtar, Quetzalcoatl, and they're all going towards Tiamat. And you see the ocean is being engulfed and stuff like that. And the Lamu, I don't know how to say their name, but the little purple things, you know what I'm talking about. Those guys, like, you see them in the ocean and they're not as, they're not as volatile as the ones that we saw dead Kingo in, right? And, <clears throat> you know, they're, they're just looking at things, just taking notice of things on the way to the, the big bad, right? And so basically TMI as from what we figure, from what we can see and from what the characters say is that she's basically bind and her arms are still binded and her legs are still binded. And it's basically looking like they have a shot right, right now in this moment. They're like, if we can get her now be before she becomes unbinded and stuff like that and she's fully loose and she can move around and do whatever she wants to, she'll probably be a problem then, right? So it'd be best to nip her in the butt right now. And you, it kind of works out that way. You get this really, really cool sequence of like, I think if I'm not mistaken, I think it was Ishtar's Noble um, Phantasm and it was super cool. And you're probably going to see it eventually in this video somewhere. It's just that... Like, I, I don't know. I really have, I didn't pay attention to order when I was putting the pictures in this video this time. So, excuse me. But, um, yeah, and basically, she uses Ritsuka, his magical energy, you know, to shoot her blast basically at full power. She went full power. So, supposedly, from her word of mouth, is like, that was the first time she was really being serious like out of the whole time that she was with him uh, that, that's a <clears throat> that's out there that's kind of out there um and basically she shoots her with it right and but before we get to that it, can we just keep talking i didn't know that they had this singing thing with tmi right like and at first she was like singing and she was blocking them back she was keeping them back so much the power that she the energy she was emitting while she was singing was i think they said it was as powerful as a hydrogen bomb and i think that's crazy and let's just talk about before we go any further okay tiamat the way that she looked when she was binded and stuff and yeah i like she looks good like that i like her like that i like her like that i don't like the cgi i hate the cgi if you've been watching this since like season one you know i hate the cgi you know i hate cgi everything fate cgi i hate <laughs> yeah, I hate to put it like that. Don't get me wrong. It's not the worst thing ever, but it's just like the character would look a hundred times better like everybody else. <laughs> but anyway, basically, you see TMI get obliterated from what it looks like by Ishtar. And everybody's like celebrating and they're happy. And you can kind of just see, feel like this is a lackluster moment. Like it feels like something is missing or either it's something about to happen and lo and behold you, you um i think it was like a leonardo and i think his name is like romani and they were basically talking and conversing and they were celebrating too until they started to notice that the magical energy i think was picking up and you just see on the screen on their screen is like this big red orb in the middle of the blue and next thing you know you see tiamat like the full tmi like like big like gorgon big like the gorgon was like i don't know massive it compared to them and she's like the same thing except this time tmi actually has legs and i don't know you, you just hear the conversation the, when they first see it right they're like we, we need to do something we should do something we, we should go at her or something like that and basically like Quetzalcoatl and Ishtar you just the way that they're going talking about it is like they don't stand a chance Quetzalcoatl straight out said that they didn't stand a chance and 
you know, that really puts things in perspective. I like how they went and they took, uh, please excuse me if this isn't her noble phantasm, but I think it is. And her noble phantasm was so awesome, right? And so powerful and so outrageous, right? And it didn't even scratch her. Like, and I like how they use that to put in perspective for you just how powerful this bad guy is, right? And I think that's pretty cool. Um, Even though, you know, Ishtar's Noble Phantasm didn't do anything. At least we got to see it, right? And I, I'm, I don't want to say the the um Tiamat that we saw before, the little one that we saw, I, I, like... It, Maybe I was just like paying attention to everything else that was going on and not enough attention to that. But it was just basically like, I think they were saying that the little one is like, I don't know. I don't know. There's something between the two. And it's like, but I guess by getting rid of that little one, it really didn't really didn't do anything. You see on the screen now. Ah, ha, you see on the screen right now, they obliterated it. Right. And. So they basically, they tuck their tails and basically run. They have no other choice than to get away because Ishtar already showed her hand. And it would have been cool to see Quetzalcoatl do something too. I think that was like, you know, don't get me wrong. It was cool to see the Noble Phantasm anytime Ishtar. But it's like Quetzalcoatl too, that would have been cool too. But And she was actually complaining earlier in the episode about how she didn't get any of the limelight and stuff, right? And... You know, as soon as she gets the chance to do it right, it just so happens that TMI is just so great that it wouldn't even matter if they did. And so basically, they make the choice to go back to um, Uruk and basically, you know, reconvene with Gilgamesh and figure out what their next plan is going to be. It's so funny, right? This is so funny. Um, so basically, they're talking to Gilgamesh, and the situation just seems grim. Like, they figure out it's like 500 people left in Europe. Uruk. Uh, before, it sounds like I'm seeing Europe. I don't know why. It just. But anyway, yeah, it's like 500 people left. And I'm like, that, that, it was a lot of people. It was a lot of people. I, I, I can't say it by number. I don't know exactly the number, but I know it was a lot of people. And 500 people left? And, you know, they were basically having this sad moment and everybody's just feeling like blah and, you know, stuff like that. Right. And basically it's like a little ray of light. Right. And well, but basically they try to um contact Irish Gale, if I am not mistaken or. OK, either one that happens for either way. Irish Gale basically shows up because Gilgamesh, I, I guess he's just thumbing through his options trying to see if she can come up with anything. And, well, at the same time, him and Ritsu came to the same conclusion. Like, if her, if Tiamat ain't on Earth, she can't be her killed. Maybe they can do something to her in hell, right? I guess because you can't kill her because she's the mother of life right and so i guess that kind of makes sense and basically you know irish gal they need irish gal they, they're having a conversation with her they need her to move the underworld <laughs> right on the yurk right it's so funny because they need her to do that and usually it would take her like i think she's at like 10 years or something like that and she's like it only take her three days because she was already planning it at first because she just hates yurik that yurik that much it's like, i don't know i just found it really hilarious um so basically that's the plan is to drop her in there and i guess the final battle is basically going to take place in the underworld so that's probably not probably that is going to be super cool i can't wait to see that um yeah man um Tiamat, she definitely made her debut. I, I feel like, I don't know, it, it, it's more to be seen. That's all I know. It's more to be seen. That, that's all I know. Um, Definitely got me hyped for this one. Pretty great episode right here. I was kind of hyped about the fight, the fights. And um, yeah, see you all next time, I guess. Um, but I'm going to end the video right here. This has been my Fate Grand Order Babylonia episode 17 review. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next video.